see. That's do we have do we have enough uh, live music uh, goers in here? I Mr. go to a lot of shows. Uh, other people go to shows too. I I have I haven't recently, but Ben Ben probably Ben I think probably to a show or two. There's a challenge in here for people for the room. Uh, what is the best live concert you've ever been to? Caravan Palace in a heartbeat. <laughs> why, is, why is that? They put on a terrific show. Yeah. Just because it's like, it's all day. So I, I went, I, I saw them when I was living in Edmonton. And it was, uh, if you remember the Pawn Shop Beach? Which one? It was the one that was like on top, like on the second floor. I don't know. Anyways. Because there's a lot along like Sony Plain Road. Like, no, I'm just... no, the venue is called the Pawn Shop. Oh, well, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember a pawn shop? I thought you were going to point out, like, remember the pawn shop? Just above that was something else. Like, I didn't actually, I didn't think there was you know, a thing going on here. Like, so the venue, the pawn shop, the great. Venue. Where was it located? Uh, Underneath, you can buy a cheap watch. Is it, near, is it on White? It's on White Ave. Okay, cool, all right. Uh, I think I have a vague idea yeah. actually where you're talking about, okay. Mic is muted. What? Could be my mic. You're, you're nice and loud. Well, I mean, you're loud in the room. I know people are full of beans. That sounds good. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyways, the venue was called The Pawn Shop. Uh, it was on the second floor of like a really old building. Um, and aside from the fact that it's just like, it's all very, very dancey and high energy music, so everyone's kind of dancing along. Uh, they bring on like creepy props and stuff. They have like very, very talented, uh, like their acoustic guitar player. Mm -hmm. It's just really, certain times he would just like start breaking out into solos that would last like two minutes with so him just like plucking out an acoustic guitar and it was really, really great. Uh, and, but the, the best part about the show was because this was an old building and it was on the second floor uh, and everyone was jumping in like <laughs> time to, to the, the beat of the music, uh -huh. uh -oh. you could feel the floor like bending underneath like the weight of everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 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 it felt like we were on a trampoline. <laughs> it, was, it was it was spooky. Uh and uh yeah, I, I was just there with one of my other friends and we just sort of looked at each other and we we're just like, you know what? This would be a pretty cool way to go. <laughs> and, like, the the time. Uh, and then just like funny capper on it. I, I hadn't I hadn't been back to Edmonton for like two and a half years since I moved out here. Yeah. Uh, and I went back for Thanksgiving. Uh, the pawn shop was closed down. <laughs> it was it missing a, a floor? Uh, no, <laughs> no, but it is, it is no longer a venue. Uh, no. So, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Cool. Great Palace puts on a good show. Anybody else? Uh, I, oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I think best show that I've seen most recently is probably Eels. Um, they are, they have been one of my favorite bands for a while. Uh, and I finally got to go see them uh, in kind of a smaller venue, which was nice. It was a pretty intimate show, which is always fun. Um, and they did some really cool uh, variants on a lot of their classic songs. Um, like, they have a song called Fresh Blood, which they did as kind of a vaguely metal cover, which was unexpected and fantastic. Um, and they did a really good cover of Raspberry Beret, which I wasn't expecting. It was, I think, one of those times where you've loved this band for a very long time, and you finally get to see them with a bunch of other people who are very excited so it's just all together great time great show who else had one yeah um i mean might be kind of a boring response but um i really like the um the legend of zelda concert that they do that they had touring around the various cities came through town oh symphony of the goddesses oh. yeah yeah, yeah. Are you lucky 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 <laughs> <laughs> and it's definitely those ones where it's like it's the song from the thing yeah, <laughs> yeah. um but yeah it was so cool like hearing like a full symphony behind those songs because they're great on their own but like you put a full symphony behind them 
fantastic. That sounds awesome. I I've seen Weird Al live several times. Nice. Uh, and my the first one I went to when I was 14 years old with my friends. Uh, my dad had to drive us three hours up to Calgary to go see it. And uh, this was like in the middle of the night. So when the show was going to be done at like 10, he would have had to then turn around and drive us back home. And he basically just chilled out in the parking lot. Um, but my buddy also had backstage passes. So mm. that made an impression as well, getting to meet Weird Al, have him sign my CDs. Um, but the amount of work that he puts into a show and just the costume changes. And this is like uh, his first Canadian tour. So that was when his Greatest Hits collection came out uh, with like... Um, Christmas at Ground Zero, like that whole thing. So this is like post Alapalooza, but anyway. Um, but yeah, watching him do all that work, watching him go through all whatever, and it was just kind of this astounding thing for 14-year-old Beach to be like, look at all the work he's doing, look at all the like the video stuff and all these other things he's doing. And then after the show, going backstage and saying, yeah, just so you know, uh, Al caught the flu in Victoria, and so he's done three shows since then, and the flu's not gone yet, so he might come in and be a little, like, subdued. And it's like, okay, and he came in the room dressed in, like, black sweats with, like, a black hoodie over his head, and everyone's like, hi, Al, you okay? Like, <laughs> like everyone's really, all his fans are just really nice and really quiet, and he's like, no, it's great, guys, like, nice to meet you. And he signed everybody's things, he's very nice. Um, but, yeah, that kind of, that thing of the difference in being, like, he put in that much work, and he was sick. He'd been sick for a week, and he was still putting in that much work to put on a good show. It was like, wow, that's... Like, he didn't want to delay the, the tour or anything like that. So that was that really made an impression with me. That's good. Uh, I've got a couple. Uh, I grew up listening to and playing a lot of jazz, so these are a couple of sort of uh, more jazz-oriented um, ones. Uh, I got to see Dave Brubeck uh, three times Whoa. live wow, that's uh, awesome. before he passed. Once in Seattle, uh, when we were like, He's somewhere in the Pacific Northwest. We have to go see him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the next, like, two years, he came to Victoria's Jazz Fest. Uh, so we saw him there. And then I also saw Herbie Hancock and Wayne Shorter, uh, who both of whom played with Miles Davis and are both amazing. And that show was very much like they played, like, maybe six songs over the course of two hours. <laughs> Their encore was about, like, 40 minutes long and amazing. Uh, I've seen Wayne Shorter a couple of times uh, after that, and he is very much the sort of person you go in, you sit down, he starts playing, and two hours later he stops, and there's nothing, <laughs> there's no like, there's no break, there's no like anything between the songs. There's like songs don't end or start. He just plays for two hours, and you're like, wow, <laughs> nice. I've got. A, I've seen a couple, a few in chat that are making me super jealous. I've never actually been to like a big concert, but I saw some people talking about going to Arion and uh, Proto Men, and uh, I saw someone. I saw someone giving a shout out to Ailstorm. Like, oh, I would yeah. love to see Ailstorm. all three of those in in person. And I think somebody the other day just popped into chat and was like, "Hey, I just got back from a Corpaclani concert. What's up?" I'm like, "Yes." Yeah. <laughs> um, but my sorry. But the my my favorite show that I that I have been to was was fantastic. Um, I have friends. Uh, I, I've I've had friends in town who are in various like punk punk projects around town. Very very local, very small. Um, but fantastic. And uh, one year, a bunch of them decided to throw together kind of like a like an off brand rifflandia. Oh. Um, yeah. In a various assortment of like people's basements and garages. And I went to one of these. It was in somebody's, I, I think it was like, yeah, it was like an unfinished basement in somebody's house. Like, not even, I think in Quadra Village ish. <laughs> wow. And it was fantastic. One of my friends was, I believe, drumming for them that day. Um, this tiny, tiny basement was absolutely jam packed, like standing room only. It was pouring rain outside. So, like, between. You know, every every two or three songs, the whole like half of the basement would kind of awkwardly shuffle out through the tiny, tiny low doorway to go take a very fast smoke break in the like foot wide uh, line along the house that was just covered by the uh, <laughs> from the rain. Um, but it was the energy was just amazing. Everybody was super into it. Like it was just it was just fun, and the music was fantastic. Awesome. Um, yeah, it was very cozy. Um, the most recent concert I've been to, I'd forgotten about this, and I don't know how because it was a great concert, is uh, 
Uh, I caught the pillows when they did their West Coast and East Coast tour this year. Cool. Um, nice. Andrew actually came down from Vancouver and was there. I, for some reason, thought it was Ben who was there, but it was Andrew. Um, and I haven't seen Fooly Cooly since it originally like aired. And hearing Little Busters just pulled me 16 years back. It was, <laughs> it was, it was fantastic. I think you might have been thinking of me because I think it was like a few weeks prior to that we were at Beer Fest. Oh. And we saw, it was like the weirdest lineup ever. Like two of the notable band, one was a band called Metalachi. Which yes. Was, oh, yes. Which was a mariachi band that did like metal covers in like a mariachi style. That was who I was uh, trying to possibly troll the five million with for oh, Don't Stop Believing. Right, yeah. <laughs> no, they, they were terrific. Yeah. Uh, with, and I think just before them, oh, I can't, do you remember what the name of the Yeti band was, Peach? No, I don't, but I remember the closer. Yeah, there were like three dudes dressed up as Yetis, Yetis. and it was really, really strange. And then the final of it was uh, Max Sabbath, mm. which is the McDonald's-themed Black Sabbath. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I saw it was, those pictures. It was wild. It was oh the weirdest God. lineup of bands I've ever, but it was perfect for, because like Beer Fest in Seattle was like, uh, dark Cirque Carnival kind of like theme, so it was, it was very, it was very fitting to be like drinking and then up on stage seeing like uh, Ronald McDonald in a straight jacket and, stuff. <laughs> and like Mayor, yeah, like I, oh the costumes are, it's like Mayor McCheese, but he's got like tusks. And stuff. <laughs> it's it's wild. The tea is great, by the way. Thanks, Brett. Yes, so thank you, Brett. We did it. We get, we all get to live another day. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got, I, I got to see, um, uh, now I'm blanking. What songs? Three Days Grace before they actually oh. got big. Oh, nice. They were like nice. fourth bill. <laughs> like they were, they were like way down. And so that was, that was a really good show. Cause it was like, they had, they had just released their first album and it was like, oh yeah, they're just like you know, these guys and got to get like their signatures and talk to them and all that stuff and it was wow. really good and that was super fun and then for a non-musical thing i got to see uh welcome to night vale when they were here oh cool oh, and nice. that was good because yeah, i saw that as well cecil baldwin i will slam dunk go see henry rollins the next time he's in town i his spoken word tours yeah. are always amazing and just because I got to go see one live in at the Windspear Center in Edmonton, which is a very fancy place. It's an it's an orchestral uh, uh, it's it's where orchestras play. It's where the ES, ESO plays, and he just was up on stage for about three hours. Uh, actually, at one point he he was like, "Okay, we're going to try something new because apparently you all have to go pee." is what I've been told. So we're going to stop about an hour and a half into this thing. We're all going to take about an eight minute break and we're going to all come back. And so everyone's just like, yes, good job. Because he will talk for three hours and not slow down. Yeah. And you're just there like, this is, this is so good. Keep telling your stories. Oh my God, I don't want to burst. You know, like, it's really amazing to, to just watch him go. He's, he's very, very good at what he does. I, I don't know a thing about his music, unfortunately. Are we doing top concert experiences? Yes. yes. Ooh, okay. I've got... Oh, thank you. Uh, top three are um, going to see Owen Pallet at Alex Goulden Hall here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this would have been like ugh, eight years ago. Yeah, I saw that. That was really good. Yeah, I, it was just a good concert and it came at an odd time in my life. And it was just really nice to go and see or have someone play the CN Tower Belongs to the Dead to me uh, with a really nice like arrangement. And I had good company for it. Uh, number two was seeing the Weaker Thans and Constantines playing at U of A <laughs> what? at the power of the... At power at the power, power plant. Yeah, power plant. Sorry, yeah. 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 Oh my God. Like, like it was it was a great double header. Tons oh. of energy. Uh, the crowd was great. It was like if you've never seen the Weaker Thans, well, I guess I can't really recommend that you go and see the Weaker Thans because they don't exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that was like my third time seeing them, and it was great. Uh, but all time best, I saw Ben Frost live in Vancouver about two years ago, nice. and it was the single loudest thing that has ever happened to me. Um, 
the floor, it was at the Imperial, I want to say, in Vancouver, and it's like this concrete venue, uh, and it vibrated. <laughs> like he set up a standing wave in a concrete floor, which I think the only other thing capable of doing that is rocket launches. Uh, it was loud, it was really loud, the music was coming from inside your brain, and uh, this would have been the Aurora concert. Anyway, if you've never listened to Ben Frost, check him out. Uh, he's loud. Hi. Oh, honorable mention goes to seeing um, Strapping Young Lad at The Generator in Prince George with like 20 other kids uh, <laughs> way back when. Because like, we just worked up this, if, if Strapping Young Lad is one of Devin Townsend's projects, it's his metal project. Uh, I think they've been defunct now for about 10 years as Devin goes off and does other things. Um, but there were two opening acts and then after the opening acts, we just imagined that they were going to pull the drapery off Gene Hoglund's drum set, and he would just be asleep there, having been asleep through the opening <laughs> acts, and they'd just be like, Gene, it's time to drum, and he'd be like, oh, oh. <laughs> right, because he was, he, Gene Hoglund is also known as the atomic clock. Oh, because he's just always yeah. on. Yeah, that's good, he keeps and good it was, time. Yeah, it, that was just a really fun show. He was playing, um, I guess he would have been playing stuff from Alien, which was his like weird experimental album. I Okay, so I just realized I actually have a really good one. My most memorable concert is uh, my grad, mm -hmm. uh, where, because every year the, uh, the, the jazz band always plays two pieces uh, during, during grad as part of a thing. It's like we get a chance to perform. And, um, so we were playing uh, What I Like About You by The Romantics mm -hmm. and Tequila, except it was a, it was a, it was a rock version in 4-4 four, four time, which is highly unusual. Mm. Um, but we were playing uh, What I Like About You, and I had first solo. And uh, the common thing is to stand up when you're going to do your solo and play into the, the microphones are right there, so play into the mic. And so what I did is I stood up, um, like four bars early, uh, which freaked out my band director because he thought I was missing the cue. I was getting up too early to, uh, and I'm in my gown because I'm graduating, right? And there's like all these, there's like 400 students behind me all in their gowns too. And I stood up and I turned around because we were playing to the audience, not playing to the, to the grad crew. And I started like, here goes nothing, and started clapping my hands above my head because everyone had been just been sitting there the whole time while we're playing. And I started clapping my hands above my head to the beat and I'm like, I've got four bars to make this work. And all of a sudden, they all started clapping too. And they didn't stop clapping to the beat. Like, basically, they all started doing that. I'm like, great, turned around, did my solo. And, and then they went nuts applauding for, for my solo, which wasn't great, but it was, it was all right. And, <laughs> but the thing is, it, kept, it got, brought the energy so much up in the room that now we have about 2,000 people in this room, essentially, just like rocking out to this jazz band. And I'm like, thank goodness. And it really brought the whole thing up. Uh, so that's kind of like the biggest rush I've had at a concert because I made that happen. That was fun. I was going to say uh, uh, another one that I forgot that honestly just in terms of spectacle was made. I've seen, uh, I, I went and saw uh, Trans-Siberian Orchestra <gasps> oh, in yeah. Toronto uh, during Christmas. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've seen them twice now and just like... The music and all the and like their showmanship is 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 huge, but the the tech team that works with them is ridiculous. Like the it like it's incredible the stuff they do. I, if you get an opportunity to see Trans Siberian Orchestra, go. It's it's a whole thing. Yeah, I, I this conversation has made me realize I have like two very distinct concert experiences. Because like the engineering side of me here, right? <laughs> yeah, has me like things like Trans Siberian Orchestra are on the list. But like musically, I don't like necessarily always appreciate them. But like the, sh the show is crazy. Um, like Roger Waters to Wall, I saw it go for chat. I I saw that live. That was incredible. Like Weird Al, I've seen live. He. he cannot do a better show than him. There's so much going on. Yeah. yeah. Um, and but, but then from a musical standpoint, like a lot of um, like the ska bands I've seen pop for chat. Like I've seen the Aquabats live. They put on a killer show. It's a very stripped down, just them, their masks, you know, and their instruments. Um, 
Real Big Fish is another one where just like there's so much energy in that. Um, I saw Dragon Force before they made it on Guitar Hero a couple times, <laughs> and that was a really good nice. show. We we have oh who's oh. left? Oh, well, I was just gonna say I remember there was a phase in my life where I saw a lot of loud <laughs> loud loud shows. I'm like, because uh, I grew up in Minnesota, so there's a lot of places that they do rock and punk. There's First Ave, that sort of thing. Um, but I remember going to a few shows, like getting to see Chevelle in a very small space nice. and Hoopa Stank and going to like Perfect Circle and mm -hmm. Evanescence and all of that and just being like, I'm deaf forever. <laughs> but eh, teenager, whatever, your years will come back, right? That mm -hmm. was my experience when I saw Dinosaur Jr. <laughs> it was just, it hurt. Yep. <laughs> My my uh, little brother is in a uh, what's called a doom is in a doom rock band in Minnesota uh, called Math and they do like a, a mix of Gregorian chant with like heavy metal and it's yeah I love them to death but whenever I listen to it sometimes I'm like okay remember to put the earplugs in before I put it on <laughs> we have. Time remaining on that giveaway? 14 let's, minutes. Let's talk about it again. <coughs> this is the Humble Bundle lot. Uh, do we have TJ around? Maybe he could speak to it a bit. But uh, actually, I won't put him on the spot. Peach. Do you want to talk about it? or? I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sorry. Uh, so this includes the two can cozies, the two pairs of sunglasses, the medium t-shirt, the cloth tote bag, the notebook, the 